Continuing our discussion on C++ STL containers, today we will look at DEC. So DEC is another sequence container and it supports push and pop operations from both the ends. And uh, this is not implemented to store elements contiguously like vector. But here the implementation is slightly different. A typical implementation would use uh, fixed size arrays. So we have multiple fixed size arrays. So it's contiguous to some extent, but we have many such arrays and these may not be contiguous. So here, what is the immediate advantage you can see as compared to vectors? So in vectors, uh, when this size was filled, let's say this size was eight at some point of time. And uh, we had copied four from previous and four slots were remaining. So once we insert four new elements, this is full. And then we, when we insert ninth element, everything else needs to be copied to a new vector. So new space is allocated for 16. These eight have to be copied here. And then ninth one will be inserted here. Similarly, if when this is full, again, this copy will happen. But here that is not the case. Once this is full, a new fixed size array will be created and no more copy will happen but ninth one will directly come here only some bookkeeping is required and it's implementation specific how that bookkeeping is done and just like other steel containers you need to include a header file which whose name is exactly same as this the container itself in order to use that and it also supports random access so if you have a deck d and you want to insert the find the third element or access the third element you can access like this d2 so it starts from 0 index 1 2 and so on so all of these are very related the functionality if you understand one container you can use other one you just need to uh, know the limitations of that container and what operations that supports so just like other containers size gives you the size then this is the assignment operator and this is the operator uh, which is which provides you random access that is you can provide the index here in this operator then front gives you the first element back gives you the last element or uh, empty is returns a boolean true or false depending on whether the container is empty or not then we have these iterators it you can traverse from left to right or right to left both ways so begin and end begin is the iterator pointing to the first element end is the iterator pointing to one position one slot past the last element so there is no element actually here at the end similarly r begins r begin points here to the last element and R end points one position before the first element, which is not, which does, which does not contain any element. So these are the iterators which help you traversal in both directions. Then we have insert and erase just like uh, other containers. So insert you provide a position, the iterator before which you want to insert. So if we have an iterator which is pointing to let's say third element. And if you pass this and you want to insert some value, then it will be inserted at third position. So whatever was the third element will be shifted at fourth position. Similarly, erase you provide either the iterator which you want to delete the element or you can also provide a range of values like from this to this, excluding the last one. Then clear will clear this entire container in one go. Everything will be cleared. And then we have push back that is push in the end so new element will be appended here push front new element will be pushed in the beginning pop back will pop the last element pop front will pop the front element as the name says so let's do some uh, exercise let's familiarize with these functions so let's first create a deck and don't forget to include this header
so size should be 5 and let's now access some of the elements using this random access third element is 3 as expected and front returns 1 and back returns the last element. Now let's iterate through this. You can also use the auto keyword here. and we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So this is how we access the iterators and traverse from left to right. The same way we can use in the reverse operator to traverse from right to left. And here you need to make it a reverse iterator. R begin, R end. So R begin will be this 5, R end will be before 1. So it will print 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. and this is as expected. Now we will look at all these functions. Push back, push front, pop back, pop front. And after doing this four push operations, we will print this deck and after popping also, we will print it again. So let's see. So it was one, two, three, four, five, and we pushed back 100 and 200. So first 100 is pushed in the end and 200 is pushed after that in the same order. Then we push front minus 100. So 1 was the first element. 100 is pushed before that. Then we do minus 200 in the front. So minus 200 is pushed in front of that. Then we do pop back once. So the last one is popped. That is 200 is gone. Then we do pop front. So minus 200 is gone. So we have from here to here. So this is as expected. And now the size will accordingly change. And now let's do d dot clear. And now if you print, nothing will be printed.
so nothing is printed after that so this has cleared the deck so i hope you understood the deck data structure uh, we will see how we can use deck to behave as a stack or queue which we will see in further lessons